For those of us who grew up in another generation, the corner drugstore was a magical place. You gave the man behind the counter an illegible note from your doctor, and he would fill tiny bottles with pills and potions that had the power to make you feel better. And perhaps most magical of all, the man knew you by name. Everett Spencer was a throwback to that earlier time when the pharmacy profession was a personal one. But now the modern era is starting to close in on him like, like a virus. And he has no prescription to fight it off. Everett Spencer was always a hero to his grandson. That's why he became a pharmacist too. In the old days, Everett was quick, sharp, on top of all the latest breakthroughs. But nowadays, he was slow, set in his ways. Just post the prescription on the board and type out the label. The new junior partner, his grandson, Martin, was going to change all that. There we are, Granddad. The family business. How about that? I couldn't be more proud. The first customer that day was a steady patron of the pharmacy since Martin was a little boy. Ruth, how are you doing this morning? Doing just fine, Everett. Do you remember my grandson, Martin? Oh, of course. <laughs> Martin is a pharmacist, too. He's going to be working with me. It's nice to see you, Mrs. Fulton. Thank you. Martin, could you snag Mrs. Fulton's prescription off the shelf? Sure. It must be wonderful having your grandson back here again and working with you, too. It's a proud day. <laughs> uh, Granddad? Yes, that's it. Uh, there's no drug indicated. Yes, we know what it's for, don't we, Ruth? <laughs> now, can I get you anything else today? No, no, no. This will keep me going. See you in a couple okay. of weeks. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Granddad, what were those pills? Oh, Ruth's been taking those for the better part of 20 years. Well, there was no drug name. I mean, what if she forgets and she starts mixing prescriptions? I mean, you should indicate what they are, unless they're sugar pills. That's right. Why are you giving her pills that have no medicinal purpose? Because she thinks they do. Okay, Granddad, it's time we step into the 21st century. The only people who are prescribed placebos anymore are... Sometimes people like Mrs. Fulton. Anyway, she swears by them. You heard her. They keep her going. Oh, Grandpa, you're still typing labels with that old typewriter? Everyone's computerized now. Everyone but me. I have no need to learn something so complicated. It's easy, Grandpa. I could teach you. It would triple our business. Doctors could email us directly. We would finally be able to compete with the chain pharmacies. But I enjoy my relationships with people. I like talking to the doctors. Well, now you can talk to the doctors about your golf game and not prescriptions. You're not going to convince me that technology is more important than human relations. Be right with you. It's me, Grandpa. Here it is, our link to the 21st century. I know, I know you're not happy about it, but this one is so easy, Grandpa. Everything we need is already loaded. We just plug it in. I got it all set up. Now, with this bundle of wires, you can go on an African safari. I'm too old for a safari. Well, not if you can do it in the comfort of your own chair. Set this baby up. I've got to mail these letters. Mrs. Samuels will be in to pick up her medication. It's 10 milligrams of Epicet. The prescription is right here. I'll put it on the board. Dr. S.L. Hampton. Yeah. Yeah, I called his office yesterday. I gave them a new email address. I'll bet they emailed that prescription. I'll be right back. I'll take care of Mrs. Samuels. Martin could tell that his grandfather was upset, but he felt that in time, he would thank him for all this. I'll be right there. Martin would never forget this customer, not after what happened that day. Hi, can I help you? Yes, I'm picking up a prescription. Harriet Samuels. Oh, yes, Mrs. Samuels. It'll be just a few minutes. Martin went to the board where Everett had posted Mrs. Samuels' prescription, but the prescription was I'm gone. I'm in somewhat of a hurry. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Hampton, 10 milligrams of Equisit. I was just about to fill it. Is there a problem? No, ma'am. No, um, 
I just, I just need to reconfirm the prescription on our new computer system. We're linked up with Dr. Hampton's office, so this should just take a second. This was the first test of Martin's system, the high-tech approach. But for some reason, the prescription wasn't coming up. As I said, uh, I'm in a hurry. Yes, ma'am, I'll, I'll be right with you. Hello, Mrs. Samuels. Oh, hello, Everett. Perhaps you can help. I'm in a hurry, and I think there might be a problem with my prescription. I'll take care of it right away. I'm sorry for the delay. Thank you, Everett. Do you have the prescription? It's not on the board. I couldn't find it. Did you call the doctor? Well, I was trying to get it on the computer first. I mean, I know that you said it was 10 milligrams of Acroset, but... Carolyn, it's Everett Spencer. I've misplaced the prescription for Harriet Samuels. Uh, can I have a minute with S.L.? S.L., I'm sorry to bother you. I, I've managed to misplace the prescription on Harriet Samuels. I know it's for Equiset, 10 milligrams, but I... One milligram? Oh, uh, oh, thank goodness I called you. Sure, sure. Goodbye. Oh, my God, Grandpa. I mean, ten milligrams would have killed her. I'm sure it said ten milligrams. We'd be right with you, Mrs. Samuels. Would you fill it for me, please? At that point, Everett walked over to check the board again. I thought you said it wasn't here. Who was watching over Spencewick Pharmacy that day? Was that fated prescription simply misplaced? If so, how did it end up back on the board? Did Everett's grandson find it and put it back himself, too embarrassed to tell his grandfather what really happened? But then, how did it disappear in the first place? Maybe there was some angelic spirit watching over the pharmacy. Does this strange story of a prescription go down easy? Or do you find it hard to swallow?